An AI bubble. AI bubble. Of the AI bubble. AI bubble. Are we in an AI bubble? Of course. Of course we are. Nvidia's market cap just hit close to five trillion dollars. OpenAI hit five hundred billion dollar valuation. Microsoft and Google are at about three point five trillion. Is AI bubble going to burst? Well, here's the part that made me do a double take. They're all investing in each other while simultaneously being each other's biggest customers. Look, look at that. OpenAI raised $40 billion at a $300 billion valuation back in March. Then just a few months later, they do a secondary sale at $500 billion. That's insane growth, right? But then I started looking at where the money actually goes. They're spending $300 billion with Oracle, $22 billion with Corviv, tens of billions more with AMD. And all of those companies, they're either investors in OpenAI or they're buying from NVIDIA, who also just invested $100 billion in OpenAI. So as an engineer, these kinds of circular dependencies make me kind of nervous. It's like looking at a code base where every single module imports every other module. And you're just like, this is going to break in production. So I went down this absolute rabbit hole over the weekend, mapping out every single connection, every investment, every contract to see what it's all about. And what I found is either the most brilliant infrastructure play in history or we're watching the world's most expensive circular import error about to throw a stack overflow. Hi, I'm Priyanka, and I'm a developer who honestly is a bit obsessed with understanding how the infrastructure behind AI actually works, how anything behind anything actually works. And on this channel, I break down the technical and business side of tools that we use every day, not just the surface level stuff, but the real economics, the architectural decisions, and yes, sometimes the questionable business practices. If that sounds interesting, consider subscribing. So let's start with the company at the center of literally everything, NVIDIA. $4.5 trillion market cap as of this week. That makes them the most valuable company on this planet. Bigger than Apple, Microsoft, and anyone. And honestly, it makes sense. They make the H100s and the new Blackwell GPUs that power basically every major AI model that you've ever used. But here's where it gets interesting. NVIDIA isn't just selling chips, they're also investing in their own customers. Like they recently agreed to invest up to 100 billion in OpenAI. Let that sink in for a second. NVIDIA is OpenAI's chip supplier and an investor. That's like AWS invested $100 billion in Netflix while Netflix pays them for cloud hosting. It's circular, right? And this pattern repeats everywhere. NVIDIA owns about 7% of Corviv, which is basically a GPU rental company. Corviv then buys billions of dollars worth of NVIDIA chips to rent out to OpenAI and other AI companies. It's GPUs all the way down. Now, let's talk about OpenAI because they're basically the engine driving all of this. $500 billion valuation after their most recent secondary sale. To put that in perspective, that's larger than the GDP of most countries. They're valued more than Visa, more than TSMC, which is wild. But here's the thing about OpenAI. They are spending money at a truly insane rate. They just committed $300 billion to Oracle over the next five years. $300 billion. That's not a typo for cloud infrastructure and compute. They're also spending 22 billion with Corviv, tens of billions more with AMD. Their burn rate is absolutely massive. And remember, Nvidia just invested 100 billion back into OpenAI. So OpenAI is buying Nvidia chips through intermediaries and Nvidia is funding OpenAI. It's a perfect circle. 
Okay, so let's talk about Oracle. I'll be honest, I didn't expect Oracle to be this central to the AI story, but here we are. OpenAI's 300 billion commitment to them is one of the largest cloud infrastructure deals in history. Oracle is basically acting as the landlord. They are building and operating massive data centers where all the AI compute happens. But Oracle's data centers run on NVIDIA chips. So Oracle is paying NVIDIA to build out their infrastructure while OpenAI is paying Oracle to use that infrastructure, which creates compute demand that requires more NVIDIA chips. Beginning to see the pattern? Now, Coreweave is fascinating because they're basically the ultimate middleman in this entire ecosystem. Their whole business model is to buy NVIDIA GPUs, put them in data centers, and then rent them out to AI companies by the hour. Simple, right? Here's how deep the connections go. NVIDIA owns more than 5% of Coreweave. They're both an investor and a supplier. Coreweave is spending about four to six billion in NVIDIA hardware right now. But then NVIDIA turns around and pre-purchases 6.3 billion worth of compute capacity from Coreweave as a guarantee. So if Coreweave can't sell all their GPU time, NVIDIA will buy it. That's honestly pretty smart, but also deeply circular. And who's Coreweave's biggest customer? OpenAI, to the tune of 22 billion in commitments. So you've got OpenAI paying Coreweave, Coreweave paying NVIDIA, and NVIDIA investing in both OpenAI and Coreweave. It's like a financial Mobius tribe. So naturally, you would think, okay, but isn't there competition? Yes, that's where AMD comes in. OpenAI just signed a massive deal with AMD to deploy six gigawatts worth of their chips. That's tens of billions of dollars. But here's the twist, and this is such an AI industry move, AMD gave OpenAI warrants to purchase up to 160 million AMD shares. That would give OpenAI roughly 10% ownership of AMD. So OpenAI is both a customer and a potential major shareholder. They're not just buying chips, they're basically getting equity in their suppliers. Now, we need to step away a little bit and look at this more holistically because this is not just happening with the infrastructure companies. The entire big tech world is interconnected here too. As we know, Microsoft is a big investor in OpenAI. It owns about 27% of the company after their recent restructuring. So, and they host ChatGPT on Azure, they power Copilot with OpenAI's models and resell OpenAI's technology to enterprise customers. So. They are investor, infrastructure provider, and reseller, triple duty. Google actually invested about $3 billion in Anthropic, OpenAI's main competitor, who makes cloud. Amazon also put $4 billion into Anthropic. So you've got this mirror ecosystem where Google and Amazon are backing Anthropic while Microsoft is backing OpenAI. And both systems work the same way. They host the models on their cloud platforms, AWS and Google Cloud. They invest billions. They buy NVIDIA's chips to run everything, and they resell the AI capabilities. Meta is doing their own thing with Llama, but they are still buying tens of thousands of NVIDIA GPUs to make it happen. And just when you thought it couldn't get more interconnected, the U.S. government is also a part of this ecosystem. Through the CHIPS Act, Intel got 10% government equity stake and $5 billion in funding. Plus they got a $5 billion investment from Apollo and wait for it, a $5 billion investment from NVIDIA. Yes, NVIDIA is their competitor. So even the government is technically part of the financial web through industrial policy. The lines between public and private investments are getting really blurry here. All right, so now that we've mapped all of this out, let's address the elephant in the room. This is exactly why you clicked on this video. Is this a bubble? On one hand, you can make the argument that this is actually brilliant 
these companies are building truly unprecedented infrastructure. We're talking about training runs that cost hundreds of millions of dollars, models with hundreds of billions of parameters, data centers consuming gigawatts of power. This isn't your typical startup ecosystem. This is infrastructure at national scale. OpenAI is generating over 13 billion in annual revenue, up from like 3 billion last year. ChatGPT has 700 million weekly active users. These aren't fake numbers. People are actually using this stuff. And if you believe AGI is coming in the next five, 10 years, then whoever controls the infrastructure wins everything. So maybe 500 billion isn't crazy for OpenAI, but on the other hand, the skeptics have a point. This is a lot of circular spending. Like when Nvidia invests 100 billion in OpenAI, but OpenAI is spending most of that money on Nvidia chips through intermediaries, is that real growth? Or is it just the same dollars going in a loop inflating valuations? OpenAI is projected to lose 8 to 14 billion this year despite their revenue growth. That's not unusual for tech companies at scale, but it does raise questions. And when you look at history, the dot-com bubble, crypto 2021, there's a pattern where circular investments create the illusion of growth right before everything collapses. So here's my take as someone who is actually building with this stuff. The technology is real. The models are getting better every day. The use cases are legit, but the financial structure, it makes me a little bit nervous. You've got about five companies who are all customers, suppliers, and investors in each other. If any one link breaks, if Nvidia can't ship enough chips, if OpenAI's revenue growth stalls, if one of these mega contracts falls apart, it could cascade. As developers, I think we need to be thinking about this. Your infrastructure costs, your model access, your entire stack, it's sitting on top of this highly concentrated interdependent system. Maybe diversify your providers. Maybe don't put all your eggs in one basket, one type of model, one type of cloud infrastructure. If you want to dig deeper into specific parts like the technical architecture of any of these companies and how they work, like how Corviv actually makes money, let me know in the comments. This is not the type of content I have been making, but I'd love to do. If you like this video, you're going to enjoy these two of my videos on how to become AI engineer and MCP versus API. I will link them here and see you in those.